goalie week, which the NHL is celebrating this week uh, as we celebrate what I think is the most important position in hockey, but you know, that's to be discussed later. We're looking at some notable goalie trades because this has really been the summer of movement mm. in between the pipes. And when you think about how important that position is, you know, it's pretty impressive that these teams have gone out and made a splash by bringing in new guys. So in honor of Goalie Week, we thought we'd have some fun and go division by division to discuss who we think is the best goalie in each division. Let's start with the defending Stanley Cup champions. The Florida Panthers are in the Atlantic. Do you think mm. their goalie is your number one in that division? Uh, you know, I, I look at this and I think the Atlantic division may be the toughest in all of hockey. I mean, mm. you know, you've got to go through Florida, the two teams in Florida. You're talking about uh, Toronto and Boston and, you know, a host of others. I, I, I think when I look at that list, Sergei Bobrovsky jumps out just because okay. he's won the Stanley Cup. Uh, he's won a couple of Vezina trophies in the past, back when he's with the Columbus Blue Jackets. But I know at one point during the playoffs, uh, he'd gone 12 or 13 games where he'd allowed two goals or fewer. That's now, crazy. Yeah, that's basically, you know, almost a month of playoff hockey where he's just let, allowing two goals or, or, or less, which is absolutely unbelievable. He's not the biggest guy in the world, a little over six feet tall, but as you can see in those highlights, very athletic. Uh, he's a competitor, and he hates to get scored on. I know he hates to get scored on in games. He hates to get scored on in practice, too, <laughs> and that's the sign of a true champion. Uh, Swayman, I think, right up there. Vasilevsky, of course, mm. with his Stanley Cups, his pedigree. But uh, in my books, uh, Bob right now, the number one guy in that division. Okay, elsewhere in the Eastern Conference, how about the Metro Division? When you mm. look at their netminders, who stands out most? Well, you know, you, you've got a couple of pretty good Russians in Chesterkin and, and Sorokin. Mm. Uh, but I, I look at this, and last year, what Shesterkin did, they won the President's Trophy, the most points in the uh, entire NHL, 114 points, uh, a record for the New York Rangers. The consistency that he shows, uh, that to me is so impressive. But but one guy I do want to point out is Jacob Markstrom, uh, the new New Jersey, the new New Jersey Devil <laughs> goaltender. Uh, of course, we remember him as a Calgary Flame for the longest time, and he didn't have a good team playing in front of him. Mm -hmm. And I know that some people have looked at some of the uh, high the stats and high danger chances. He's got one of the best save percentages in those situations. So he's not going to see as many tough shots behind that New Jersey Devils defense with Dougie Hamilton being back. Uh, Brett Pesci, of course, now a New Jersey Devil. I think Jacob Markstrom is going to surprise a lot of people. And obviously the New Jersey Devils, yes, they will be a, a playoff team. Mm. And they've got They've got the other players. They yeah. needed a goaltender. I think they got their guy. Yeah, they've needed a goaltender now for several years. Forever. And so this could be uh, the winning recipe for the Devils. We know a lot of people are high on them going mm -hmm. into the new season. Out West, let's look at the Central Division. And it's like every year we talk about Connor Hellebeck as Mr. Vesna. He's uh, kind of the guy to beat in this division, I think. Do you disagree or agree? No, I don't. Okay. I, I don't. And I, and I feel bad for Connor Hellebuck because uh, in the postseason, he didn't have a very good run. He had, mm. you know, five games, we allowed 25 goals in those five losses to the Colorado Avalanche. So, uh, but regular season, they don't come any better. Uh, another uh, Vezina trophy for uh, for Connor Hellebuck. Uh, he's got everything you want in a goaltender. He's got size. He's got that patience. He always just seems to let the puck come to him. He, he's never losing his feet. He's always in control of his crease. And yeah, when he has to make a spectacular save, he can. So yeah, Connor Hellebuck is my guy. Yeah. Um, you know, Saros, I, I think Saros with some goals scoring in front of him. They brought in some guys who can put the puck in the net. Uh, watch out for UC Saros too. I yeah. think that this could be his year. Yeah, new contract. He's feeling yeah. good. He knows that, you know, he's got the eight-year deal. He's the man. Uh, and they made a commitment to him. They, he wants to make a commitment to his team. And I know Barry Trotz is a big fan of his. Uh, he wants to repay them in a big way. So, uh, yeah, you see Saros. Watch out for the National Predators. They're, they're going to be sneaky good this year. Okay. How about in the Pacific? We've spent a lot of time in this show already talking about the new goalie. We have Mackenzie Blackwood listed there. But, you know, Askarov also coming into San Jose. This is an interesting list. Who stands out here? Uh, yeah, you know what? It, if you had asked me last year at this time, would it be Stuart Skinner? I'd say no way. Right. But what he did during the regular season and then in the playoffs, remember he had the reset in the yes. playoffs against yes. the Vancouver Canucks? He gets pulled. Uh, that's an embarrassing situation. He mm. sat for a couple of games, but he came back and he came back with a vengeance. And that's a growing opportunity. That's a learning opportunity for any elite goaltender. And it was for him. He learned from it. He came back. He was absolutely outstanding against the Dallas Stars. 
took the Florida Panthers, the eventual Stanley Cup winners, to seven games, and part of it was because of the play of Stuart Skinner. So um, I think he's your number one guy in the uh, in that division. Yeah, well, uh, certainly an interesting division to watch out for. We also have Thatcher Demko too, which if he's healthy. He could be someone to look out for in that division too, right? Absolutely. Yeah, the Vancouver Canucks, uh, you know, they didn't have his services at times last year, and, and it showed. Um, but he's another one of those guys, uh, just absolutely hates to be scored on, very athletic, and he takes his position very seriously. Uh, he, he's a guy who really studies the game, studies shooters, and uh, a real technician between the pipes. All right. Well, Thatcher Demko and the Canucks certainly hoping to build off the success of last year, winning the division in the Pacific. But Stuart Skinner and the Oilers are going to have something to say about that, I think. So, I think so. we'll see.